When borders closed as a result of the COVID pandemic, it showed the need for governments to share and analyze large amounts of data impacting public safety. The IBM Center for the Business of Government has put out a report on leveraging technologies to improve operations and security across borders. Dan Chenock is the executive director of that center. Dan, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mimi. So walk us through the problem. What's, what are the issues here? So when you've got countries across the world, and in this case we have the US, Singapore, and Australia, and the IT leaders for the border security agencies of each nation needing to share information um, and relying on technology that sometimes is you know, 10, 20 years uh, outdated, uh, relying on data stores that are in multiple places and need to be shared quickly, um, relying on uh, intersection with the private sector, with airlines, uh, shipping, uh, ports, et cetera. Um, all of those things are challenges in terms of exchanging real-time information for border agencies. And the discussion in the, uh, among the three leaders was how can they um, learn from one another and really create a better frame for exchanging information. So can you walk us through an example of why this is important? Um, so if you're thinking about the need to ensure that uh, goods or people are traveling safely and securely, that the efficiency is being done cor correctly, but there's also security to catch uh, mal actors, to catch um, uh, goods that shouldn't be transported across borders. At a time when the, the shape of those borders is changing, the rules governing travel and transit are changing, the need to understand how to uh, exchange that information and do so in a way that complies with ethics and privacy and respects the vast majority of legitimate traffic while catching the bad guys uh, is very important, especially today. So is this a technology problem or is it a policy problem? It's both. Um, it's really a problem of management and technology and, and data exchange. So the idea of developing public-private partnerships where companies who are dealing, the shipping companies, um, uh, again, the, the transportation companies that are exchanging information across borders, um, the exchange of the use of technology, like in the, um, in the case of Australia, uh, they develop a digital passport so that if you're traveling to the country, rather than have a long process of entry, you can you basically fill out a passport in advance with all of your information, including your health information, so that your entry to the country is safe, secure, and speedy. So explain the role of artificial intelligence and other technologies in, in this issue of border security. So artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies can help the governments get ahead of the problem. And instead of having uh, analysts kind of sift through lots of data to understand where are the patterns and where are the anomalies that they need to go after, what's, what's the problematic package or the person of interest who's coming across the border, artificial intelligence can be used to much more quickly um, enable the governments to find those problems and to uh, admit and, and process the legitimate traffic more effectively. In, in the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Directorate, uh, CIO Sinebo Gagualia talked about the bots that they're using um, to uh, increase their internal efficiency, to increase uh, their ability to, to migrate email, for example, from days and weeks to really a day. So what about supply chain assurance, right? So what needs to be put in place, what technologies need to be put in place so that the same thing doesn't happen again that we're we're actually having right now. Yeah, so this is again an exchange of information across borders so that governments understand sort of not just what is the person or good of interest coming in, but what is the derivation, the provenance of those materials as they're, as they're coming into a port. And analytics technologies, uh, evolving blockchain technologies um, like the Trade Lens Global Network, where countries are sharing information across a blockchain much more efficiently than they could using traditional analytics, are all technologies that have, uh, have importance and relevance. So what have we learned now from the pandemic? What are the lessons learned? I'm hoping that we've learned a lot about this. Yeah, I think it's, the, the, it's a combination, as your question before asked, of having the right strategy um, understanding sort of what are the goals of travel and transport, how can customs and border agencies enable the legitimate flow of people and goods, and then using data and technology to much more quickly and effectively catch the, the mal actor, understand sort of where the person of interest is, be able to apprehend them quickly, and enable the system to operate efficiently and effectively. You, you mentioned that your center hosted this dialogue with leaders from Singapore and Australia. I wonder if you learned anything from them that can be applied here in the United States. States. Um, certainly, uh, in the case of the Singapore Home Team Science and Technology Agency, what they call HTX, their um, uh, IT director, Eng Yabun, uh, leads 15 centers of excellence 
Uh, and those centers of excellence focus on technologies, and they're somewhat similar to our centers of excellence in the General Services Administration. They're probably more technology focused, and they're, they really go a little bit more granular to really understand how does biometrics matter here? How does robotics process automation? Um, how does the evolving technology suite around IoT and blockchain come into play? And so digging deep on those technologies through centers of excellence model, I think can help us build our model more effectively. So let's talk about evolving threats and new things that are coming down. What do we need to do now to prepare for those future threats? Yeah, so that's where the three leaders, uh, including Roddy Kovacevic in Australia, the CIO, uh, at, um, at their Department of Home Affairs, and the other two leaders uh, really talked about getting ahead of the threat through analytics, through scenario planning, um, through engagement with citizens um, who understand and often are the sort of at the front line of the threat picture because they're seeing things in real time at the borders, um, on, uh, creating data flows to, to capture that information more, more efficiently and develop models, simulation and modeling uh, to get ahead of the threat. All right, well, Dan, thanks so much. Nice to see you. Thank you, Mimi. Great to see you as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.